fantastic. You know, the, the, the sponsor's note about what AI is doing, I think, is a perfect example how it's starting to impact the industry, which is pretty interesting. And what I thought I'd do today is just highlight a little bit as a recap in the beginning. I don't know what you know about AI. You probably hear it almost as much as you hear blockchain, and you're just kind of tired of hearing it, wondering how it really might affect you. But it really is changing. This is kind of a, a many people ask me, what's, what's the difference today, right? We were here when the internet started and email started, people started seeing content online. But it, it really is changing at a magnitude and a rate that it hasn't in the past. So I thought I'd highlight that a bit. It's really not technology changing as one curve. Many times we think of things being linear, right? You go from 11th grade to 12th grade and things tend to be fairly straight. But technology really doesn't work that way. And what's really happened along the way, what you've seen is a series of nested S-curves. So these are new technologies that keep coming out, essentially building on top of what's already there, making it look like this kind of massive innovation is happening in one failed swoop. But it isn't. So if you look at 3D printing, for example, everyone knows about 3D printing, I'm sure. 3D printing's actually been around about 30 years. It was invented in 1986. So in the early years, you probably never heard about it, but things start to happen exponentially in technology. So again, we think back in this linear curve, but there really is a really interesting inflection point of technology, and here I call it the knee of the curve. And that's where, say, in this case of 3D printing, it really starts to become commercially interesting, where you didn't hear about it for the previous 25 years or so. So AI is really in the same growth mode. I'd say we're actually a little before the knee of the curve. You're hearing it, but you really haven't seen it implemented in material ways that affect your life. But over the next five, six years, you will, and I think especially in your industry. So a few things I thought I'd highlight, again, why this is different. It's because there's really what I call a tech multiplier effect. So it's each one of these components continuing to build on each other. It's sensors, edge computing, which is intelligent computing at the edge of the network, not in the cloud. Cost is coming down for all of these components. So now you can build this stuff into things you never would have thought before. You're going to see all these IoT devices that have machine intelligence on board. They don't have to go to the cloud to figure out what's going on with sensors. Crowdsourcing, where you can find experts anywhere in the world who can attack these problems. 5G, which is going to be very different than 4G, is not just a little faster. It's a whole lot faster. And there's many more things you can do in a significantly higher density. Blockchain, you've heard about. Maybe it'll put some of you out of business if all the photographers can essentially post all their material online and they don't need the shutter stocks in between. Who knows, right? Depending on how you evolve over time. Quantum and sensors. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. Biocomputing and solar as well. But it's stuff you need to think about, right? Maybe you'll be reinvented. So there's different types of artificial intelligence for those of you who maybe haven't read up too much on it. So there's automated intelligence, right? That's making some of your manual tasks a little faster and easier than you normally did. Assisted, where it's making it better. In this case, it might be with the screening of content. Augmented, helping you make better decisions. And autonomous, which is, of course, say, self-driving cars and the things of the like. So again, when you think of autonomous intelligence, you can think of you know, smart swarms of drones that might spray pesticide over crops, or machine drones that might go in and actually clear the fruit. So there's also waves of intelligence that come out as well in terms of AI. Thank you. We have a, that's a little sloped up here. There we go. Save a disaster. Uh, internet AI. So you're probably starting to already see this. And this isn't just did you click on a link and do we advertise. It's how long did your cursor hover over a particular link. There's a lot more behavior involved. Business AI. Again, scouting things you might normally not have noticed in business intelligence. Perception, of course, everything's going to have eyes and ears. Matter of fact, my, my wife and I were driving in from Malibu today, and there was a little autonomous robot in the parking lot in Malibu Country Mart scurrying around with about 100 sensors. That's their virtual security guard. Eyes and ears, sensors. It actually picks up the IMEI and the cell information of every cell phone in range. So it knows every phone that was in the area. It has video of everything, including license plate recognition. So it's starting to happen. This is the freaky stuff we watched shows about when I was a kid in the 80s. And then, of course, autonomous AI, as I would mentioned. So you have these different technologies coming out in separate waves. 
So what I, what I thought I'd do is share a little bit about how this might impact the business. And it's nothing better than kind of watching a video to kind of give you an example. So this is applied in real time machine vision on a movie you might have seen. So you can see the computer can actually pick up what's going on real time, what items are in the field and what's happening. So imagine the set of eyes that you can have on your equipment, on your videos, which is pretty impressive. This technology is taking a standard motion video and using AI to fill in the missing frames that will allow for slow motion video. And you can tell, you, you can't even tell the difference of what frames are built by the computer automatically and which were real. Now there go your watermarks <laughs> when you can wipe them right out and have the computer fill in the missing material. Think of how we used to do that in the old days, right? It was a lot of Photoshop work. And it's also predictive enhancement. Maybe you want something better than what's there. You want to dress her up for nighttime now. So some pretty cool stuff coming out, and I just thought I'd at least share a little bit of that, and I'll leave off to uh, whoever's next after me.